Um, a little bit about uh, this um, song just dropped today, Andrew. A song by Michael Giacchino just came up. We got Mr. Rez in the, in the chat saying charcuterie, spelling it very phonetically. We're going to talk about music by Michael Giacchino, though. The Catwoman's song, score, track, I guess you could call it, from the Batman soundtrack, just uh, hit uh, today, this morning, like midnight sometime around there. This is the third one. First, we got the Batman then we got the Riddler. Now we got the Catwoman score. We're not going to play it because YouTube will block us. And, you know, all 67 cents that we're going to make from this video, we need that to survive. But, Andrew, I sent you this track. You listened to it. What were your thoughts on the Catwoman score? This might be my favorite of the three scores, James. I like this. I like that they used um, violin. Violin kind of goes hand in hand with Catwoman. Uh, there was just something about the way a violin sounds, something about the way strings sound that complement the movement of a cat. If you look at old cartoons or like old Batman stuff and listen to the music that plays when there are cat women or just cats on screen, you hear a lot of strings and there's a reason for that. Michael Giacchino knows what he's doing. And this has that right sound. There's also some really cool kind of like melancholic piano going on there. Uh, it sounds kind of like you're, the mood that this song put me in is like I'm standing in an after hours jazz club and something dangerous is about to happen. Yeah. Uh, it's just the perfect sort of way to spell out this character musically. And yeah, it's my favorite of the three. The Batman one is a very close second though. I, this, I sent you after I heard this the first time I sent it to you and I said, this is very like haunting and well, I said haunting and I felt, um, what was he? There was something about it. It just felt tragic almost. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I was like, is this, how telling is this for this character? You know, is this character going to be haunted and tragic? Because I think from what we can gather from what we've seen without getting into any spoilers, because we don't have any anyway, we have, we have not been to, we are two, the two of us have not been lucky enough to have been invited by Warner brothers to go see it, which I don't understand. But we've been covering everything Warner brothers for the last 27 years and they still won't invite us. Um, but everything we know about this character is she she loses her mother. Uh, she is raised by uh, Falcone. She's like Falcone's uh, like adopted daughter. I don't know if that's uh, technically is or if it's just that's the way they kind of have their connection with each other. Mm -hmm. So her you know her upbringing has been probably tragic. Her mother was let's be honest probably killed by Falcone's men. Like <laughs> that's probably the reality of it all right there. So I don't, the, this score, yeah, really brought something out. I know you said the Batman was your number two, but the Riddler score, I want to talk about that just a little tiny bit because that one, the Batman one's great. They released that first for a reason. And that's very, you know, it's very Batman-y, especially the ending, the, the, the last little. If you haven't listened to that track, you got to go <laughs> check it out. It's on, uh, and that, that track, the Batman uh, theme is on, Apple, YouTube, and Spotify, whereas the Riddler and Catwoman are only on Spotify and YouTube, I believe. So you want to check that out. But take the Riddler apple. one, yeah, take it. <laughs> the, uh, the the Apple, the Riddler one though intrigues me a lot because of the use of Ave Maria, and the one scene that we've seen is the funeral scene, and Ave Maria is aside from Christmas time, it's it's used a lot at funerals, so it uh, you know. Brings on the death of the Riddler, and you're a huge Riddler fan as well. Nobody likes the Riddler as much as you do, and they seem uh, we're getting away from the score a little bit, but it seems, Andrew, that we're getting the Riddler that you've been dying for in this movie. Hell yes, the score for his I have to listen to it again because it's the one that just stuck with me the least. I think I was like playing Assassin's Creed or something when you sent me the Riddler score, so I was listening to it. And then I just kind of was like, oh, that's nice. And then I carried on assassinating people in medieval Europe. So I was not like focused on it as much as I would want to be. But I remember it being spooky, all the right kinds of spooky. And I remember it having some really good bombast in the middle. But for the most part, it was very quiet and unnerving, which is kind of Riddler style. So again, it makes sense. All of the Giacchino stuff, all of his, uh, his scores all make sense. Uh, I want to say hello to Rez and Jennifer in the chat. And Jennifer is saying Riddler is the best. Thank you, Jennifer. Because that is exactly right. That is the right Oh, answer. whatever. Yeah. He is the best. I love the Riddler. I do love the Riddler. My favorite villain is the Penguin. I don't know why. I think it's just um, I put my, my old uh, 1980s 
toy away, but I, there's just something with the penguin I always like. But the t- I, I have this um, weird obsession with top hats, and the penguin and top hats kind of gets me. And I, <laughs> I kind of wish Colin Farrell would wear one, but whatever. That's my. I I love the Riddler theme though. The Riddler theme, the Ave Maria. It's very, it's very haunting. Very. There's something about it. Uh, we're only a few weeks away from this movie, but the Catwoman score just dropped today. It is. I think it's haunting and tragic, and I think it's worth checking out. Like you said, it might be the best of the three. It feels almost like it's the the most complete of the three the batman one as much as i like it 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 feels like it's part of something bigger in a lot of without that i mean it should but it feels like it's something bigger like it's part of this bigger orchestral score that's going on that we're going to get the riddler one is ave maria like i said and this one is just i kind of feel like i get to know the character and now look when i see the movie maybe that's not the case whatsoever but when i hear that that uh theme i definitely feel like i i know who selena kyle is underneath the cowl she's got nine lives andrew she points that out in the trailer so she does there you go. I, I had a question because i was you know you and i both grew up watching the adam west stuff right so we're yeah. we both kind of were there for all this different iterations of batman as he has grown and changed and i i can't figure out and maybe you know because you're smarter and older um at what point did mostly older <laughs> mostly older at what point in time did catwoman stop being a villain because now she's just kind of like every time she pops up she's just like a thief yeah, who she... ends up marrying him i gotta say I, I i could be completely off because i don't know i haven't read too many catwoman uh, me mostly just in Batman, but I, I got I on I think she was always kind of on the fence. Fence. I think she was always a villain, but she was never like the Joker, just all the way villain. I think she was someone who kind of towed the line. She was like the, she was the mirror of a Batman. Whereas Batman's on this side of the mirror, she was on this side of the mirror. That's what I kind of think. Because even when you watch those old the old Adam West shows, she. She was evil, but she had that soft spot for Adam West. And who didn't? Who didn't? But I think it was late 90s, around the late 90s, after Michelle Pfeiffer. I think that's when they kind of decided. It might even been or the animated series might have towed the line a little bit where she wasn't completely bad. And then they kind of made her an anti-villain, which is very, it's funny because it's almost exactly like what they're doing with Harley Quinn. Like Harley yeah. Quinn, like you play like Injustice. It's like Harley Quinn's just like a hero. And you're like, oh, okay. So she's just a good guy now? Yeah. And then, you know, you see the arguments, well, she, that's how she is. It's just the Joker's what makes her bad. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> that's how it works. Good. But like, I, they've done the same type of thing. And I think it kind of it works with both of them, to be honest. And I, the, prob- the, the problem is we all love the villains, but we all watch the stories for the heroes. And so if you want to make a character like Catwoman or Harley Quinn more accessible, you got to make them heroic, even though they're not good. Like Har- Harley Quinn and Catwoman, they're, they're both thieves, right? But they... But they or they're villains, but they they there's always the chance that they'll be on the right side of things. And if you play the Arkham Asylum games, Catwoman's not a good guy, but she's not necessarily a pure villain. Kind of like Mr. Freeze is the same way. Yeah. I mean Catwoman is always going to look out for herself first. But I feel like if you put me in a room with Harley there's a really good chance she'll break my kneecaps with something. Whereas if you put me in a room with Catwoman, she'll probably just be like later and she'll take off without hurting me. So like there, there is like lines that they won't let Catwoman cross anymore. And it's weird because I feel like, you know, Eartha Kitt would have, you know, she'd flirt with Adam West, but she was still more than willing to tie him to a bomb. So I'm just so curious where that line was first drawn and why. I, I I think it was well, why it was to to make a profit, and I it, it, honestly I don't know. Somebody's going to comment and tell us how radius, but I'm guessing it had something <laughs> to do with the cat the Catwoman movie with Halle Berry, where they had to justify you know doing something around there, and I think it was around that time. And I don't know. I I, I think this movie's going to make her bad. I think she's going to be more evil than good in this movie, and I think it's going to. I think she's going to be towing the line the whole movie. And at, towards the end, when you think, okay, well, the Falcone influence, she's realizing the Falcone influence. And then at the end, she's going to say, no, 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 no. There's a Falcone influence, but I am who I am and I am not a good person. And then she's, that's when, that's the moment when Selena Kyle becomes Catwoman. 
that's what I'm going with. I could be completely off. Like I said, Warner Bros. wasn't kind enough to invite us to a pre-screening, so they're dead to us. Thank you. 